have Enrique Mazan uh, from one of my favorite places, University of, Mich University of Michigan, who's going to tell us about higher thanomanifolds. So thank you very much, Ravi, for the introduction. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for connecting here today. So the goal of my talk today is to report on recent progress on an area, on a subject that, uh, as you can see from the title, we call the higher final conditions on final manifolds. So I will explain you what do we mean by these uh, higher positivity conditions. And just to keep in mind, I mean, this is a pretty recent notion. It started with uh, the work of the young star. Then you continue with the work of Carolina Rauz and Anna Maria Castrave. And some of the recent progress is based on uh, the joint project with uh, the seven people that are listed here. So Carolina Raujo, Roya Berheshti, Anna Maria Castrave, Kelly Bush, Svetlana Makarova, Libby Taylor, that maybe you know, and Nivedita Nishwanathan. So let me get started. And, um, and we start by fixing the setting we will work with today. OK. So we work with uh, X, uh, smooth projective. Uh, variety we I denote by T of X the tangent bundle of the variety the tangent bundle of X and I denote by minus kx so this is C1 the first chain class uh, of the tangent bundle so this is a class in the h2 xz and then we also call it like the anti-canonical class of X. <clears throat> so we want to work with Fano manifolds. So let me just uh, remind you what is a Fano manifold. So X is Fano. If this anti-canonical class is ample. And an immediate consequence, I mean, uh, that follows from the condition of being Fano is a positivity condition that I want to mentioned here. So if X is Fano, then it follows that if we take this canonical, um, uh, this anti-canonical class and we intersect with any curve on our uh, variety, then this intersection is uh, strictly positive. So this is the first like condition of positivity. We're saying that any curve paired with uh, the canonical line bundle will give us uh, a, a positive number, a strictly positive number. So the goal of this higher final condition is indeed to explore condition of positivity on the tangent bundle and to see exactly as here we saw, we impose a condition of positivity and we saw a geometric consequences like the intersection with all the curves. We want to uh, see how we can relate stronger positivity condition with stronger geometric properties of our, on our variety. On our variety X. And so um, the idea would be that if there are some geometric properties that holds for Fano manifolds, then if we impose a, a stronger positivity condition on the Fano, then we will expect stronger geometric consequences. So we are looking for such a condition. And the starting point, the inspiration, it's really like to uh, refresh and remind a couple of the geometric properties that holds for Fano manifolds, and then see to which extent we can uh, strengthen these results. So what are, the, what are the type of geometric properties that we can expect and that we will wish to find a suitable positivity condition such that these geometric properties hold. So for this, I will start by recalling you some of the properties of, of Fano manifolds. And so let's start, I will basically, basically uh, recall you two properties. Of course, there are more, but for the moment, for the problem that we want to um, tackle, uh, already these two would be quite interesting for our purposes. So let me um, also, another remark, 
I didn't give you at the moment any uh, example of funnel manifolds, but the point is that we will see many during the talk. So if you want to keep some example, of course, keep in mind the projective space, this is a funnel manifold, and now you will see others. For instance, another way to produce example is consider a smooth hypersurface of degree D in a projective space. So this is smooth hypersurface of degree D. Then uh, to check if it's, if it's final, we need to compute the canonical line bundle. So then, so minus K X of D by a junction, we know that this is N plus one minus D, D degree. And this is, we take the um, hyperplane section in the projective space, we can restrict it to our hypersurface. This will give us uh, the generator, uh, like uh, um, a class in the H2. And this is exactly um, like this class multiplied by N plus one minus T will give us uh, the canonical line bundle. Now you see immediately that if we want this to be FANO, so XD is FANO, if and only if uh, this um, coefficient in front, it's, I mean, this uh, factor is positive. So if and only if D is more than equal than N. We want not only positive, strictly positive. So second example that I just gave you, uh, all the hypersurface of degree D smaller than N, smaller than equal than N in PN are example of one of manifolds. Now, let me add a couple of remarks about this condition D smaller than equal than N. So this property for the smooth hypersurface is such that if D is smaller than equal than N, one can prove that indeed XD is covered by conics. Meaning that for each point of our variety, we can find a conic containing our hypersurface and pass it through the point. If more strictly we consider D to be smaller or equal than N minus one, then we can do even better. So XD will be covered by lines. And now if instead we take the complement condition, so when D is bigger than equal than N plus one, then there exists no rational curves for a general point um, of our hypersurface, for a general point of XD. So we see immediately that if we uh, pack together the first two conditions, then B in FANO is equivalent to having D smaller than or equal than N for the hypersurface. And this is also equivalent to say that XD is covered by rational curves. So we, this is a statement that here as I presented also for the smooth hypersurface of degree D, but indeed it's just one special case of a much more um, um, like um, bigger results that is indeed due to Mori. So Mori in uh, 1971 proved that indeed all the funnel manifolds, not only the one produces smooth hypersurface of degree D, are indeed covered by rational curves. And later, Campana Collar, Mia, Mia Oka, and Mori proved that indeed. For the funnel manifolds, even a stronger condition holds is that funnel manifolds are rationally connected. What does it mean here to be rationally connected? It means that it's not only true that for, through every point we can find a rational curves, but it's also true that given any pair of general points, we can find a rational curves uh, passing through both these two points. OK, so this holds for panel. Then for the question we will ask is, can we find a stronger positivity condition such that 
not only uh, our variety will be covered by uh, rational curves, but for instance, a, a condition such that it can be covered by rational surfaces or rational triples or rational k folds. These will be higher positivity condition uh, that we will that we are looking for basically. And, and, and I'm getting this. Am I right that the second theorem, like the hard thing, is the first theorem that you could bend and break, and then the second yeah. is not so hard once you define yes. rationally connected. And so, yes. in your setting, you're going to try to wiggle the curves enough. Yeah, like you're going to do something to make them wiggle enough, and then you're going to win. And you're trying to figure out how to make them wiggle enough. Is that your game? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yes, yes. Yeah, 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 indeed. I mean, I think that, yeah, I, I mean, the first result it, is one of the consequences of, of the results such that Mori won the Fields Medal. So that's the art uh, and the, break, I mean, the big breakthrough uh, in, in the subject. And then those are all like using similar techniques, other results that can be proved uh, for the final manifolds. Yes. So let's keep for the moment this sort of property we would like to uh, generalize. So being covered by rational k fold Let's move to a second property that Fano manifolds um, do have. So, um, so for the second property, again, let's start from the case of smooth hypersurface. It is a good uh, starting point. Let's see what happens for the Fano and let's see how we can extend it. So the result that I want to mention is a result that is due to Sen from the, I mean, this is from 1936, and then later generalized by Lang in the 50s. So in this setting, they do not consider just uh, one um, hypersurface, they consider a family of hypersurface. So curly X is a family of hypersurfaces again, of degree D in CPN. And our base here, B is just a smooth variety of dimension K. Okay, this is the setting. Now, uh, Zen proved that when we assume K equal one, so this is his case, and we assume that D is more than equal to N, then it's true that our family has a section. So we know that D is more than equal to one is equivalent to say Fano. So what Sen proved is that a family of Fano hypersurface in CPN over a, a curve, our family, I always admit a section. And then what uh, Lang proved is that when we take uh, higher k, then we need to ask for d at the power k to be smaller than equal than n to guarantee that pi is a rational section. Okay. So then, uh, more recently in 2003, um, Graber, Harris, and Starr partially generalized uh, this result now to family of, um, again, to family of Fano manifolds, even more generally to, fa to family of rationally connected uh, varieties. So again, the setting will be, we take a family curly X over B. This is a family of smooth, smooth projective varieties. Now, they only extend, let's say, the 10 part of the result. So they only work with over a curve B. Okay. But what they prove is that if the general fiber of this family is rationally connected, so in particular, if it's final, this is fine, then pi as a section. Okay, so now what is still missing for the funnel uh, is what is like a condition such that if instead of looking only um, for family over a curve, we look for family over a higher dimensional variety, what is the right condition on the general fiber such that we will have a section or a rational section? 
And again, we expect that these stronger positivity condition will be such that they will guarantee that for family, we can find a section. So let me say, put in these two, um, two, these two properties that we saw, let me put them together and state like very explicitly what is the problem uh, we want to um, tackle. So we want to find um, conditions. So find, find conditions, let me call it FK. So they will depend on, on this K such that. So first of all, we would like to generalize this uh, Lang's theorem. So we expect that this condition in the case of the um, hypersurface in CPN, this condition should be really equivalent to say that the degree to the power K is more than and equal than N. So the first condition is um, for an hypersurface X D in CPN, we expect that the condition FK to be equivalent to say that DK is more than or equal than N. Okay, so it means that for K equal one, we really want to get back our final manifolds. So this, this will work because for F, uh, K equal one, we know that it's a final manifold if and only if D is more than or equal than N. Then the second condition that we would like is that if X satisfies FK, then it will follow that X is covered by rational K fold. And then the third condition that we uh, look at is that now if we take family of projective manifold, now over a k-dimensional base and such that the general fibers satisfy FK. Then such a family as a rational section. Okay, here I need to be more precise in the sense that even if we take like the very nicest general fiber that we can have, even like all projective space that we expect to be like the, the most positive uh, final manifold it exists, then we could exist some families that do not do never admit um, a section. And this is due to the fact that they have a, a non-trivial Brouwer obstruction. So to be precise, this third condition should be state modulo Brouwer obstruction. Meaning that if the Brouwer obstruction um, all, uh, are all trivial, then indeed we find, we look for a condition at K on the general fiber that is enough uh, to give us the existence of a rational section. And so you have to define what Brower is. There's going to be some well-defined, or maybe it's depending what this family is. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, you're going to have to define Brower obstruction, but can be something and model this one single obstruction, which is an obstruction. Yes. Are guaranteed to win, and your base is not required to be rational or anything. It's arbitrary. Uh, uh, no, no. Right. I think so. Uh, all I think that at the moment is not. I think that there is not. Uh, maybe let me uh, already add something like at the moment this is an open problem in the sense okay. that we are looking for the right conditions right so uh, the young and star they introduce two type of notions that could solve the problem one is the notion of uh, rationally simply connected that i mean it's try to uh, take inspiration from idea of, of, of topology and translate it in terms of algebraic geometry and they i mean they test uh, this this notion especially to see when they can produce a rational section. But then in another uh, direction, there is another notion that is the one I want to talk about, that is the notion of two final, three final, or in general, K final. So I will talk more on this second one. In this second one, at the moment, uh, I mean, it's clear how we relate to uh, part one and part two of this problem. 
But the part three of this problem, so see how a K-Fano manifold, if it has our family, such as the general fiber is K-Fano, admits a sectional knot, this is still unexplored. Yeah. So I think that, yeah, to answer your question, yes. Once we get to a, a, a good candidate for this notion, then we also need to uh, make clear what is exactly the Brouwer structure we want to take in consideration. It makes everything work. Uh, I mean, not as nice as possible. Okay. And and the first one, you really want if and only if, not just when you really think it's going to be your desire is going to be if and only if. For the for this I, smooth hypersurface, yes. Right. So I mean, um, so at the moment, yeah. I mean, yeah. These two notions seems to work. I mean, to satisfy uh, condition one. Then, I mean, as you will see, I will make some comments towards the end. We are not yet sure that uh, these are the right notions. I mean, we are still looking like to improve and see. So you will see there are benefits and drawbacks in, this, uh, in these notions. So it could be that if we want to make it uh, to weaken the notion, then maybe we will only have one direction of the implication. But at the moment, we are at, at the stage where condition one will hold for the K-Fano and for the, yeah, the, the, that we talk about. So yeah, let's try to see how do we answer this problem. So maybe for F1, basically the property that I mentioned above, uh, where, I mean, where are our guiding examples? So for F1, we can, for instance, take the condition to be Fano. Or we can also take the condition to be rationally connected. Okay. Um, then from as soon as we move to condition F2, this is where we have various approach and we do not yet have a very clear uh, picture. But let me focus. So among the various approach, there is this approach of k fano manifold, that is the one I want to present. So let's see how we will define a k fano manifold. So first, we will assume that we work with fano, x is fano. And we say that um, a fano manifold is in particular k fano. If, if now we take all the churn character, so chi of the tangent bundle, Okay, uh, for i from one to k, then we can pair them with variety of, so containing x whose dimension is i. So this pairing uh, will give us a number. So what we ask is that these are all positive. So this holds for all. So exactly the condition that we saw for uh, the, the Fano manifolds when we intersect them with, with curves. Now we say that a two Fano is such that all the intersection with defective surface needs to be positive. And a K, uh, uh, three Fano is such that first is Fano, then it's two Fano, and, and it's also three Fano. So it means that now all the intersection with uh, the effective threefold in our variety needs to be positive. Okay, so let me recall just very briefly, so this CHI is the i-th churn character. So these are constructed as polynomials in the churn classes. And so just let me record that CH1, for instance, of a line bundle is just C1 of the line bundle. So from this, we see immediately that uh, a fano, it's always one fano. Okay, so in particular, x fano, it's always one fano. Uh, then, in general, if you want to keep in mind some other formulas, then whenever we have like a direct sum of line bundles, so L1, Lm, then we can express these. Uh, K churn characters in terms of the churn character of the line bundles. This is one over K factorial, the sum of C1 um, L 
i to the k. Okay. And in general, these are just polynomials in, in the churn classes. Okay. So now. Uh, of course, so, of course, I'm now very curious as to why the churn character, like why this is the right thing to. Why? So, I guess that's coming soon with the main results. You ask, uh, is it your question why the churn character and not the churn classes? For example, right? So, yeah. but the answer is going to be soon because you'll have results that say because of this, with this. Uh, I mean, it is because otherwise, for the smooth hypersurface, we do not realize the condition that d k, d k is more than equal than n is equivalent to the definition of being k final. But, but but that seemed less important than the second one, right? I mean uh, the. I mean, I think it's uh, more easily to check, but it's I uh, I don't know if it's less important. I think, I mean, you really want that everything that we know and works, I mean, you want to keep the smooth hypersurface as your, um, I mean, as your baby case of, of, of all these notions. So you want that if there you can find the condition when it's covered by rational curve, rational surface, and this can be maybe expressed in terms of this um, power of DK, then you want this to be just one special example of a more general class of funnel manifolds. Right. Or, or sorry, what I meant is the covered by curve, rational curves, rational surface. That seems to be the important thing. Yes, so, yes, yes. Here. Sorry. That, yeah. so that's, that's what I meant. And so yeah, that's yeah, all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so sorry. I thought that when you said the first one, you meant the, the oh, very first condition. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I meant just the, the number, like the d to the k. But the reason yeah. the number is important is because of the geometry. So, and yes. so this is going to drive the. Okay, great. I'll, we'll find yeah. out. So now let's see, let's check together if, uh, for the like the condition here in name condition one. Let's see if we are we are taking as FK this K final uh, definition. Let's see if it's uh, um, compatible with the condition of having uh, D to the K smaller than equal than N. So for this, I need to give you the expression for the Kth turn character of uh, hypersurface in CPN. So this is given by one over k factorial, and now n plus one minus dk. And now this is again we take our hyperplane class, we restrict to our uh, hypersurface, and we take the k power. Okay. So now we see immediately that x d is k final. If and only if this coefficients are all positive, so d to the k is more than equal to n. So we check our requirement number one for the condition of, of being fk. Okay, that's that's super convincing as to why the Turing character. Yeah, is. yeah. Why, if you take just, I mean, one thing that when I was starting, I say, okay, why do we need to work with characters and not classes? So I try to check this positivity condition, for instance, for if we work with Turing classes. And then you don't, I mean, you get very weird bounds on D, like it would be like, or D very small or D very large. I mean, this would not even, I mean, will even like get out from the funnel or in the, in the range smaller than equal than N, you only get very low uh, degrees. So it, this, it doesn't seem to work well, while the chain character seems to work well, like for instance, for, the, for this remark number two. Okay, now, Mm, let's see um, maybe another non-example of a funnel that I think of, of a non two funnel that I think this is interesting. So suppose that we start with X and Y, two funnel manifolds, then it's always true that the product will still be funnel. But X times Y is never two funnel. So let's see what is the problem, why this condition uh, is not preserved by taking products. So the second character of the tangent bundle of um, the variety X times Y is obtained as pulling back the two chain characters. So let me call pi X and pi Y the two projection. Then we pull back CH2 of TX plus CH2 of TY. And now it is enough to produce one surface, effective surface, they will pair negatively of zero with uh, this churn character uh, to say that the variety cannot be too final. 
So I take the surface given by a curve in X times a curve in Y. And now by like um, projection formula, we can see immediately that CH2 of T X times Y paired with the surface is equal to zero. So in the product, we can always produce a surface that will pair negatively with the second chain character. So products are never too final. So, so, so in this case, if mm -hmm. we're thinking about them, including rational surfaces, X includes rational curves, Y does too. So this definitely is covered by rational surfaces, but I guess this feels like, I'm trying to think about why I don't like products. And the answer is this rational surface isn't it's like a or it's like something covered by rational curves versus rationally connected where the curves can move all over the place and these surfaces mm -hmm. I guess seem kind of uh, stuck they don't they don't move freely yeah. and so this is the this is so this so then this should make me feel this is a feature not a bug then mm -hmm. okay yeah <laughs> okay so these are all non example I can give you more for instance. Uh, uh, projectivization of vector bundles. Sometimes they can be final, but they are never too final. And they can be like, we can start trying to take classes that we know of final manifolds. And if we're able to express the second turn character or even higher, then we can try to check the condition of being or not being two final, three final, or k final. So, and this was indeed what we, we did. So let me mention like one of the main results in, in, in the paper um, that we had. So these, I mean, we built on the work of uh, Carolina Araujo and Ana Maria Castrave. And now let me just write, instead of all the names, just the initials. So building on their works, what we gain is that we had a complete classification of two fano and three fano mm, of index bigger than equal than the dimension of the variety minus two. Okay, so uh, maybe you want me to recall what we mean here by index. So when we have a, a manifold, we can talk about the index of this manifold as being the maximum of the integer such that we can write minus kx as m times another class in the h2. This is the index. And why did we classify the fan, two fano and three fano that have uh, this condition on the index? Well, because these are the fano manifold that have been already classified. So we have a complete list of all the fano um, such that the index is bigger equal than the dimension minus two. So basically we went through the list of all the FANO and we check which are two FANO and which are three FANOs. And I will explain you a little bit the strategy. So it's not just a case by case. I mean, there is there are some um, like, like a very specific techniques that geometric techniques that we use to decide if it was two FANO and three FANOs that is very geometric and interesting. So I, I will tell you like how we, how we study this, um, how we um, uh, achieve this complete classification. But let me just mention what is the other result that we have. So we also have a complete classification, again, of two FANO and three FANO. Among the rational homogeneous spaces. So rational homogeneous spaces are example of Fano manifolds. They have a very nice description because we can use all the combinatorial, they, they can be constructed starting from the Dinkin diagram. So there is all combinatoric and like Schubert calculus techniques that can be involved in these computations. And so we use these uh, combinatorics and, and, and the result on the intersectional and of for rational homogeneous spaces, again, to prove and to list what are two FANO and three FANO. And just, I mean, to be um, precise, at the moment, we, we the paper just considered the case of Picard rank one. 
but the result can be generalized to a uh, higher Picard rank. Okay, so let's see, okay, how, how did we achieve uh, this classification? So let me say something about uh, the strategy of the, it's behind this, these two results. So um, for the strategy, so we start with X that is a smooth, a smooth funnel, right? And let's take in X a general point, small X, a general point. Now, um, Collar studied the space, like denoted rational curves and X of X. This is a space that a scheme that parameterizes rational curve on our variety passing through the point. So this is parameterizing. rational curves on X. Mm, sorry. Through our small point. And then this in general, it's, I mean, can have many irreducible components. So let's take H sub X, a proper reducible component. For instance, a way to choose uh, such proper reducible component, we can, for instance, choose um, the component that contains the curve that have minimal degree with respect to minus kx. For instance, curves of minimal degree with respect to minus kx. So because they have minimal degree, they can't break. So that exactly. This is why this is a proper uh, component, yes. Yeah. Okay, so then from the construction, I mean, this of this, um, I mean, this rational curves in N, it's like a subspace in the, in the, in the um, chow of our variety. So this, I mean, it's all, this HX comes with a, a diagram such that here we have our variety X, here we have our H sub X, and this comes also with a universal family. Okay, so this is a universal family. So, and we have in particular these two arrows. So what does it mean? I mean, here, each point in our H sub X is parameterized in a curves. In the universal family, we're just taking the curves itself. And then when we evaluate our curves, we are just seeing our curve inside X, so we will have all our curves will pass through, through X. Now, we, the strategy is really to use and play with this diagram um, and see how the positivity condition on X is uh, reflected on the positivity condition of the, for the variety H sub X. So let me explain what do I mean here. So, so we use this theorem, the following theorems. So this is first due to um, Araujo and Castrave. So what we have is that, for instance, if X is two funnel, and the dimension of this H sub X is at least one, then what they prove is then H sub X is funnel. And similarly, if X is three funnel, and the dimension of H sub X is at least two, then H sub X is two funnel. So this means that we can try to do a sort of, um, we have an inductive structure in our classification, because first we, try, we, have, we are given the, the funnel manifolds. Then we want to check which of these funnel manifolds is also two funnel. But then we start with our X, we want to check, we construct H sub X and we see immediately if H sub X is not funnel, then X was not two funnel. And the same holds for the three funnel and the two funnel. If we already have a list of the two funnel and we want to check which variety is three funnel, we will construct the associated H sub X and check if this does not, uh, uh, appear in our list of two funnel, then we can just cross out and we know that we were not working with a three funnel manifold. 
So maybe you said this and I, 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 I forgotten it, but is the, the HX, those curves of minimal degree, you don't know that they cover X or anything? Not, and this is exactly the problem. We don't even know the dimension. So this is something, uh, I mean, we know it exists. I mean, we can talk about this H sub X, but even knowing, um, I mean, what is its dimension and, and, and the property, this is still like, um, yeah, I mean, this is not easy to, to say it in general. And so this is part of our assumption, basically. Okay, and so now you can, okay, this is, these two theorems, if we use the opposite implication, are a good way to disprove that something is two fano or three fano. We get to the H sub X, we, we know that it's not in the list, then we know this variety was not two fano or three fano. So you can wonder to which extent we can um, reverse the implication. And indeed, this is possible. So when we work, for instance, for the two fano, at least we have the opposite implication. So for instance, if we start with um, a variety whose uh, fourth Betty number is one, why this condition? This condition is saying to us that we only need to check the intersection with one surface to decide if our variety is two fano or not. So this is why we have this assumption. Then the condition of being X is two fano, if and only if, uh, when we take, so we know that minus k h sub x is going to be ample, right? Because we know that if it's to fano, h sub x is fano, so minus the canonical will be ample. So also, if we multiply this by two, this is still it stays ample. But now I'm going to subtract something. So I want to subtract dimension of h sub x times a uh, fixed polarization Lx. And we want this to be still ample. So let me explain what is this L sub x. So let's go back to our diagram. So we have this universal family, we have this evaluation map, and this map is, of course, a, a P1 bundle, right? Because uh, over every point, we're taking the rational curves. Now we can complete this diagram with an arrow to the projectivization of the tangent bundle at the point, such that to C, we are, we'll associate the tangent direction of the curve C at the point uh, X. So tangent direction at the point curly, uh, the, at, the pole, at the point small X. Now on the projective space, we have uh, a class O1. And when we pull back, so this map in particular, tau x is finite, is parational onto its image. So we pull back and we get a polarization on, uh, on h sub x that that will denote l sub x. So l uh, sub x is tau x r of O1. So now this is again a polarization. So it's a positive class. And what the condition here in the theorem is telling us is that uh, the variety is too fano, if and only if this line bundle given by, we start with an ample minus two um, K of H sub X, and we subtract something positive is still ample, then this is the condition that allows us to reverse. So to study uh, two fano by studying its uh, variety of, of uh, minimal rational curves passing through a general point. Okay. Okay, so this explain uh, what is our strategy for the classification, but these two results that I mentioned can also be used if you want to see why two fano and three fano are suitable notion um, to prove a su suitable condition to see that our uh, variety is covered by rational curves of rational trifles. Indeed, what again, uh, Anna Maria um, um, Castrave and Carolina Araujo prove is that um, not only in the first condition, uh, H sub X is Fano, but one can also prove that indeed there exists a rational surface through our point. So what is the idea here? So if H, we start with a Fano, H sub X is two Fano, uh, sorry, we start with a two Fano, 
and H sub X is Fano. So Fano means covered by rational curves. Now we take a curve in H sub X, and now we use again this diagram. So we take the pre-image, so a P1 bundle of our curve will give us a surface, and then what now we have a surface, a rational surface in this universal family. And now we need to prove that also the image via the evaluation map will still be a rational surface in our variety. This will produce our rational surface. And similar for the three funnel. So if we know that H sub X is two funnel, then we know there exists a rational surface in H sub X. We construct the P1 bundle, we get a rational trifold, and then this will give us a rational trifold also on, our, on the variety. So also for this second part, we have that but here there is a, a part of the assumption. So if moreover, H sub X and L of X is not P2 O2, then there exists a rational trifold. Group X. So mm, this is, uh, okay, why do we have this assumption on H sub X, L X not being P2 O2? So this is the condition such that, of course, we can start with a surface in H sub X. We get a P1 bundle over the surface, so we get a threefold in the universal family. Then if this happens, so that H sub X, L of X is P2 O2, then we, in, I mean, we, are, we cannot guarantee that uh, when we take the image via the evaluation, then this is still a rational um, threefold. But if this does not happen, then the evaluation map is very well behaved, so it stays a rational threefold. Okay. So this is, I think, more or less uh, the best known results that um, relates k fano condition to the requirement number two in our problem, like being covered by rational k-fold. Now, maybe what I want, so it seems to work very well because uh, we had three requirements. The first one has been fulfilled. The second one, we have good, uh, already like uh, good evidence for uh, two FANO and three FANO. Uh, I told you that the third condition, the third requirement, the one of every section has not been explored yet. So it seems as, at least very promising. But there are some there are some problems. So let me maybe say them as as remarks. Ah, so so it's not actually yeah. failed yet. So it's not that the third condition has failed; it just has not succeeded. Exactly, has not been studied yet. And I think that part of the problem is that now you will see in the remarks. Um, so you see why probably the question and the research went on a, a different directions because. One of the problems of this notion is that, for instance, all known example of mm, well, like two fano and then, I mean, k fano are just two, uh, like k, k fano are always two fano, okay? So all known example of two fano have Picard rank one. So already, it's, this is a first uh, uh, evidence that this could be a restrictive notion. But then even more, like all the known example of three funnel at the moment are complete intersection in weighted projective space. So we had this all list of all rational homogeneous spaces that we could um, form. So we have all the Grassmannian, orthogonal Grassmannian, symplectic Grassmannian, all of them. So we check that the only one that are indeed trifano are basically quadrics and projective spaces. And then from the other classification that we have, all the things that are, uh, I mean, the only trifano manifolds that appear were only complete intersection in weighted projective space. So at the moment, it may seem a little bit empty to prove very strong general results about 
um, having and meeting sections. If the only known case that we have are complete intersection, they maybe can be studied directly. I mean, they be, I mean, they, we don't need to work with such a general notion of, of a K funnel to, pre, to prove uh, that, for instance, they admit a section or they admit uh, they are covered by rational uh, K fold. And yeah, so maybe let me also mention that indeed for all known example of three final rational homogeneous spaces, are or PN, N needs to be at least three, uh, or a quadric QN in P n plus one, and here the n is at least seven. So we only get quadric and projective spaces. So this is what made us doubt that maybe uh, this is not like the best, the, the best definition that we want to take as a candidate for our condition Fk. But if you want to see also like on a, from a more like optimistic point of view, then maybe this could be still a good notion if we want to use this as a notion to characterize, for instance, complete intersection or projective space or quadrics. So like one question that we ask is, is it possible to find a K, maybe depending on the dimension N, such that um, if X is N-dimensional and K final, then X is a complete intersection in a weighted projective space. Like, can we use K-final condition to characterize complete intersection in weighted projective space? So for instance, at the moment, from what we know, we could take K equal three for all the N, and this will work, like, because there are no other uh, known example. So then maybe, if we, instead of just looking for such a K, maybe if we, if we find a K sufficiently high, then we are only left with projective space and quadrics. And maybe for a K high enough, we, only get, we also get rid of the quadrics. And then this will give us a characterization of the projective space. So like, let me say the conjecture is that the only n-dimensional K funnel for k equal to, so we need to take k depending on the dimension, but quite large. So this is the condition. The, the only um, n-dimensional k final is indeed the projective space. So this k is cooked up such that indeed um, the quadrics will not satisfy, and there are no complete intersections that will satisfy uh, the, this condition. And I mean, this conjecture is sort of trying to give a characterization of the projective space. And at the moment, all the known characterization, for instance, um, I mean, one of the most recent, I try to characterize the projective space by looking at its intersection with all the curves. Like if the minus the canonical times all the curves is always bigger than equal than n plus one, then the variety needs to be the projective space. So now here, if we want to work with, uh, I mean, if this conjecture is true, then we're saying that if we can now also look at higher, um, like at other intersection, not only with curves, but like with uh, surfaces, three folds and so on. And this will give us a way again to characterize, to characterize the projective space. And maybe just uh, to conclude, if we, instead of working off with all the Fano manifolds, we restrict to the toric Fano manifolds, then the conjecture um, predicts that the only n-dimensional two Fano uh, toric manifold is the projective space. So within the class of, of toric manifolds, the two, the two final condition will be as restrictive, uh, such restricted that we only need, I mean, with the only example that we will find will be Pn. 
So this conjecture, I mean, we believe it's true. I mean, while the second one, we, I mean, the while this conjecture here, I mean, it would be ideal to, to prove because it will indeed give us new characterization, but at the moment, uh, it's quite hard to tackle. The second conjecture that I mentioned here has been already proved uh, up to dimension eight. So the point is that up to dimension eight, we have a description like a, an algorithm, a complete classification of all the toric Fano manifolds. And for all of them, except the projective space, we can always find a surface such that the intersection is zero or negative. So such that all the historic variety will not be too final. And now what we are trying to do is uh, like to find like a more general arguments that will not depend on the classification that will work for, for any n in order to prove that indeed, like in within the uh, toric Fano manifolds, the only two Fano is the projective space. So here you see how restrictive this notion becomes, but still, I mean, as I mentioned, there are benefits and drawbacks to have a very uh, strict uh, uh, condition. So I think I will stop here and I will be happy to answer uh, if there are more questions. <laughs>